Hello, Jacob here again, and today I'm bringing you a, vi a video on Velvet Assassin. So, this is a uh, game that came out a while ago, came out in 2009, and uh, I am bringing you. I'm going to do a video on it. So, uh, this resume campaign. So I've played the first couple of levels of the game, and uh, so this will be the third level in the game. It's just loaded. So basically, uh, I'm thinking of uh, separating my videos out a bit. So uh, newer games will be separated from older games. So I'll kind of... Uh, you'll see what I mean when, when we get into it. But uh, old games and new games are going to be separated from now on, I think. So we'll just, uh, watch In France, scene. there was a man whom I'd always wanted to meet. Colonel Willy Schunzel, better known as the Butcher of Paris. It was no wonder that he was at the top of the list. It is just that so far no one had succeeded in coming close to him. We had learned that Schunzel wanted to see the looted art in the cathedral. As ever, he followed the siren call of gold. It was reported that every entrance to the interior of the cathedral was blocked except for one door which led down into the crypt. However, the entire area was heavily guarded. I had to keep my eyes open, but an opportunity always arises. So, here we go. Uh, so basically, this is a, uh, a stealth game that came out in 2009 by a, a studio called uh, Replay Studios. Okay, so the cutscenes are, yeah. Uh, might turn that up a little bit. For some reason, the uh, cutscenes are a lot louder than the uh, actual game audio, which is a bit irritating. Not in too loud. So, yeah. Uh, made by a studio called uh, Replay Studios. Published by South Peak Interactive. So, uh, uh, you might not have heard of South Peak Interactive. They uh, put out a lot of. Should we say, uh, I guess, budget releases? They, well, mm, they put out games that budget releases kind of not not right, I suppose, because they put out games that are, are full price releases. Cause this was a, a full price release when it came out in uh, 2009. They put out games of, uh, we'll say, varying quality. South Peak Interactive, because uh, I think they put out two worlds as well, like uh, the two worlds games, which uh, aren't that great. Uh, so yeah, it's a stealth game, well, set in World War II. Uh, my kind of aim of this video is to kind of, uh, I guess, assess the game. To kind of uh, see how the game holds up from a uh, kind of looking at it uh, from a 2016 perspective, I suppose. Because uh, this game in particular, Velvet Assassin, kind of got a, a, a very mixed reception when it came out. I had a quick look at some uh, reviews, and there's uh, quite a lot of uh, low scores and quite a few kind of. Uh, but then there was a few a uh, few positive scores for it as well. But so far, what from what I've played of it so far, I'm uh, not having an awful time with it. But it's definitely not great, and uh, we'll get into why that is. Uh, once you've played with the level a little bit. <coughs> so I'm um, playing on the... There's two difficulties. I'm playing on the hardest difficulty at the moment. So uh, uh, the basic setup of the game is that... Um, we're playing as this woman here. I actually can't remember her name. So uh, I guess that doesn't really... Uh, that's not a great endorsement. I can't even remember the main character's name. But basically, basically we're in a kind of like a, a coma. And the, these missions in the game are kind of... Uh, Oh, we're going to climb up here. A kind of, uh, she's kind of um, viewing them in flashback or in a coma. Because um, you haven't seen it, but in the in some of the cutscenes, you can see she's uh, lying in a kind of like a hospital bed. So I guess she was. I guess uh, at some point we've been captured and, uh, by the, by the Nazis. No, we're not going to do that. 
Um, so yeah, we're, we're kind of uh, we're kind of like this uh, black ops agent. We're kind of going by the enemy lines and uh, to uh, complete missions and uh, kill Nazis. So, oh, what's this med kit? Ah, here we go. So, one uh, one way the game kind of uh, plays off of this uh, flashback mechanic is that um, we've got morphine that we can use. So the morphine is basically a uh, get get um, get out of jail free card. So once you use morphine, uh, time freezes. So uh, if you're spotted by an enemy, you can uh, use your morphine. And uh, it runs run up to them and kill them basically, because uh, they they just freeze and time freezes. But you can still move, obviously. Oh, we've just been spotted there. We'll just show it off here, I suppose. So we use our morphine. Time slows down. We're in our little uh, 90 here. We we'll killed this guy. He's probably gonna die here. Yeah, we died. Uh, so. Like I said, it's a stealth game, and when it uh, oh, we're back at the very beginning. When it says it's a stealth game, it uh, it definitely means that it's a stealth game, because uh, this game, you die uh, really quickly in this game. If you're if the uh, enemy spots you, you're pretty much dead if you don't uh, run away. So we have got a gun here. We've got a silenced pistol, and then the in the uh, last mission we were uh, given a shotgun right at the very end. But this game is uh, it's definitely not a shooter. It's a uh, it's a full on stealth game. And uh kind of looking at it from a 2016 perspective, it's kind of a uh, a bit weird. I mean uh I'm just going to stab that guy in the neck. But like a uh, stealth games of a a more modern well, I see you know, I said I'm going to play uh, play old games and kind of separate them from new games, but this, is, I don't know, it feels a bit weird calling this an old game. It did come out seven years ago, but uh, you look at more modern stealth games and they kind of, a lot of modern stealth games try and mix uh, stealth and action together. So something like Splinter Cell, the, the uh, newer Splinter Cell games, or Dishonored, kind of like to uh, mix it up a bit. So in a game like Dishonored, Obviously, uh, you can play the game uh, stealth uh, stealthily, but then when you are when you are spotted in uh, in uh, other stealth games, usually you can fight uh, fight your way out of it. So they'll give you the tools to kind of uh, fight your way out of a a bad spot if you get caught. Whereas in this game, I mean, uh, once you're spotted, you've pretty much had it. If you haven't got any morphine. You can shoot your way out of situations, but you've uh, got limited ammo. Like we've only got, uh, as you can see in the top left corner, we've only got seven seven uh, bullets for our silenced pistol here. We we'll wait for these two to stop talking before we make our way through the area. Um, come on, you two. Yeah, so it's not necessarily a bad thing that it's a. Uh, a full-on stealth game, but uh, the problems with this game will arise. The main problem I've got with this game is the uh, this guy going to stop here. Is the enemy AI is a uh, pretty stupid in this game. You can uh, pick up bodies and hide them. So of course, in a stealth game, you want. Uh, you know, you want the enemies to be fairly, at least reasonably smart, because uh, when you're spotted in a stealth game, you want them to, you know, you don't want it to be easy to get away from them. Or shoot this guy in the head if you can. Yeah, kind of goes. Oh shit! Killed that guy. But we'll try and we'll uh, try and show it off. I don't how uh, I'm not sure how that guy actually. Uh, how did that guy um, know we were there? I don't know. So you can break fuse boxes, which kind of uh, it's not really 
uh, that important in this level, I suppose, in, as it's daytime. But you break the fuse box, and that will, uh, if there's a a, a a spotlight in the level, the light will turn off, which will let you pass through. So obviously, uh, like most stealth games, being in a uh, you can sneak easier through a dark area than a light area. So you can look through keyholes. Fairly standard stuff, really. Sometimes the uh, doors are locked and you have to find a key to get through. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, let's talk about the bad AI. Can we kill this guy before he turns around? Yeah. Down he goes. Oh, pick up his body. Yeah, the enemies in this game, when, when they do spot you, they don't really give much chase. They kind of, uh... Let's break the fuse box. Like in the last level, it's kind of hard to really explain about showing it, but uh, in the last level there was a, a big container, like a, a, a fuel container, and there's, uh, there's a big large room full of uh, fuel containers, and there was uh, three enemies in the room. So I took out the two enemies, and the uh, third one spotted me, so... He kind of uh, gave chase, but then uh, I just ended up, um, so there was this big fuel container and I just ended up doing circles around it, and rather than uh, he just kind of uh, followed me around the uh, container, just doing uh, kind of like a ring around the rosy and just follow me around around this container, you know, in a, uh, you didn't really seem, uh, a smarter AI would have uh, realised um, where I was and what, what what I was trying to do. Okay, you can use toilets to hide from enemies apparently. Okay, well, oh, there was a uh, some glass on the floor. So in this game, uh, if you step on the uh, shards of shards of glass, oh, he says. We'll see if we can show it off here. Like this guy here, he's looking for us. But uh, he obviously knows we're over here somewhere. But he's he's uh oh he's just walking off now. But like uh, if he come round on the right hand side of this box, I could just go around the left hand side and just kind of get behind him. They don't really seem. They kind of just go to where they saw you and just kind of look around, but they don't actually. They don't look for you in a very in a very realistic way, I suppose. Like this guy here, he knows he's seen this dead body over here. Then he's just kind of stood there looking around. He's not actually looking for me in a very realistic way, I suppose. They're uh, not the smartest. So we're going to pop this guy. This guy's just going to stand here, I think. He's not going to move. So we'll just uh, stab him. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest problem I got with the game. It's just that a good stealth game kind of needs a good, uh, good um, AI to kind of make it challenging, I suppose. The other problem I got, uh, the other problem I got with the game is that uh, um, I suppose to a certain extent you kind of have to. Ex well, no, nah, I'm not really going to excuse this game because um, it came out in 2009. But then when you think about other games that came out in 2009, it's kind of it's not amazing. This game, like a uh, 2009, that was the that was the year that uh, Modern Warfare 2 came out and uh, stuff like Red Faction Guerrilla and stuff like that. And uh, kind of by those standards, this game is uh, not that great. But uh, like the enemies in this game have uh, very uh, set patrol patterns, which is obviously it's fairly standard stuff for a uh, for a stealth game to have enemies patrolling in certain patterns. But um, it just doesn't make for a very interesting game because the game basically, or well, so far anyway. Like I said, this is only the third level. The game mostly seems to consist of just entering a room, uh, seeing 
while watching the enemy patrol patterns and then just uh, walking behind them and uh, stabbing them in the back basically like this guy here I've not had to watch him for long to know that he is uh, going to walk to the left up to the top of the ship and this guy up here is going to walk to the right past this door so I know that uh, to get past this area all I really have to do is just uh, wait for this guy to go walk past and when he walks the other way I'll go behind him and uh, stab him in the back not especially difficult really So he's going to go back over there, this guy's going to walk over there, and we're going to come behind him. Well, he might turn around before we have a chance to kill him. Okay, well, so the uh, silenced pistol doesn't actually work very well. Okay, he just uh, saw me and didn't do anything. That was uh, not good. <laughs> try and stab him with a knife, he died. So yeah, like you can see, that guy literally walked a few, like a couple of meters in front of me and didn't seem to notice me, which was not great. We should try, try and hang on to our ship point that's giving us a silenced pistol that doesn't, which, uh, which the enemies can hear. So we're not going to we're not going to uh, step on that glass this time like we did last time. Oh, I see. There's a toilet there. We can uh, we can hide in that toilet. So we're going to stab this guy in the back and uh, move on. No. Oh. Okay. I guess that guy over there must have seen must have uh, saw us. So I'll get seat spotted by that guy. So I do have a, a certain respect for this game going for a World War II setting. Because so obviously uh, uh, World War II games by this point were kind of uh, out of vogue, I suppose. They certainly uh, were not as popular as they used to be by this point. So obviously uh, sort of around the mid, early and mid-2000s, uh, World War Two games, uh, World War Two shooters uh, specifically were uh, pretty much were well, they were they were uh, massively popular. So obviously, the Call of Duty and the Medal of Honor series were pretty much exclusively World War Two games at that point. Um, and then by two thousand and nine, obviously, uh, once a bon uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare came out, kind of a uh, Things uh, switched to certainly in the shooter space. Things became uh, all well, uh, modern warfare. Well, that guy over there is going to spot us if we walk over there. So uh, kind of by this point, if you were doing a World War Two game, it kind of had to be something different. So obviously, doing this uh, kind of stealth game is something uh, a bit more interesting. But. Uh, go away but yeah I mean even um, but even then there were better World War 2 games than this that came out because uh, the uh, Saboteur by <coughs> Pandemic Studios that I think that um, I think that was a 2009 game as well actually could be wrong that might have been what was that 2010 it might have been 2010 actually could be but it was around this time that the uh, the saboteur by uh, EA and Pandemic came out, and that was uh, obviously a open world game. I actually quite liked the uh, the saboteur. I thought it was pretty decent. But uh, in this being. Uh, doesn't even really do anything that interesting with the World War Two setting so far, really. I mean, you could take this game and just put it in any setting, really, and it wouldn't really 
make much of a difference to be honest. We kill this guy before he turns around. Yes. Just about. Okay, we've been spotted. Now oh, the door's locked. So I guess one of these uh, guys must be carrying the, uh, the key here. Okay, well, that was a. Uh, that was not a very impressive explosion, <laughs> to say the least. So we're going to have to kill those two guys on the boat. I uh, I might edit this bit out because you've watched me do this. Uh, this will be the third time or the th you've watched me uh, go through this area. Alright, we are back here again. So we've got to uh, kill these two guys on the boat before we can move on. So I guess we're going to have to, uh, well, just kill these two guys down here first, I suppose. Come down here, stand this guy in the back. Okay, this guy over here has got the key by the looks of it. Yeah, it's got the key, is he? Uh, nope. Oh, I guess this guy up here must have the key. So get spotted. So we used up all of our uh, pistol ammo in the uh, in the bit that I edited out because I got spotted, which is not good. Where the, where's the key then? Can we go through this door here? Okay, so we have to turn the power off. We can't go through this door because it's locked. So, uh, there's a map in the game. Uh, helps to have a map. I'm going to uh, steal somebody else's joke. Uh, but the, uh, the map in this game is pretty useless, to be honest. I mean, this is as much as you can zoom it in. I don't know. I, d I found the map just a bit confusing. While we're here, I may as well mention this. There's a uh, upgrade system in the game. So basically, once you've got a uh, an FXP, you can uh, you've got these three stats here that you can upgrade. So in the last mission, I upgraded my stealth stat, which uh, makes me sneak slightly faster. And the uh, to get XP, well, the quickest way to get XP is to uh, find these collectibles in the level. Each collectible gives you a decent amount of XP. So, uh, let's see. Whoa. Okay, so, oh yeah, you can uh, push boxes in the game. And uh, you, you can climb on top of the boxes usually to uh, find a new area. So turning this off will presumably let us through the gate. There we go. the hole, there's a guard, he's probably got the key I assume. Okay, well he's just talking to himself. Okay, got the key. No one in here. Oh, okay, we've got a... Uh, by a uh, disguise. So uh, the med kits in the game, basically, uh, once you, uh, you can't carry med kits with you, you can only okay use the wardrobe to change clothes. Change clothes. There we go. Okay, so uh, that's uh, something new. We didn't have this in the uh, last level, but uh, yeah, like I was saying, uh, wearing 
access uniform allows you to remain undetected. Presence of enemy, your cover will be blown if you get too close to enemies or act suspiciously. Alright then. Yeah, you can't carry medkits in the game, you can only uh, pick them up. And once you pick them up, you uh, use them automatically. Which is a bit a bit weird, really. I mean, most games will let you carry a number of medkits with you. I don't know why the uh, game thought that was a good idea, to just... Well, I guess maybe to make it more difficult, I suppose. But yeah, I don't really like... Because yeah, you can end up in situations where you've got uh, basically no health and you're going to die. And if you can't find a med to get in the level, you've basically had it, I suppose. But then I suppose being a stealth game, you've not really... I suppose you can get, make it through a level with low health, seeing as you're supposed to stealth your way through the level rather than fight your way through the level, I suppose. So can we uh, kill this guy over here? Oh yeah, of course we can't... Uh, we can't get too close or act suspiciously. But then this guy doesn't know we're back here anyway, so we can probably just... Oh. Not good. Oh, okay. He's just going to walk off, apparently. I really want to uh, get that collectible over there. Or we'll choose one of our morphemes, I suppose. Why not? Down he goes. Makes it a lot easier. Okay, we've got another cutscene. All right. Well, there's a sniper. He's uh, probably going to shoot us, I'm guessing, if he uh, spots us. So, uh, okay, so I guess we can't really do anything too fishy without uh, him shooting us, I guess. So I guess we just kind of have to just walk to the level and not get too close to people, I suppose. Over here. Not too difficult, really. We have to make it over here. I mean, it's nice that it's giving us something different to do. Because uh, <coughs> what you've seen so far of me. Uh, oh, yeah, but there, are, there is a. Uh, you can hide in the bushes sometimes. If they are. Uh, if there are bushes to hide in, you can uh, duck down and hide in them. Yeah, like pretty much what you've seen so far of the game of me, ooh, he's getting a bit close, of me kind of sneaking up on people and stabbing them, is pretty much all the game's been so far. So, I don't know, I like the fact that it's, uh, oh shit, the fact that it's giving us something, we're basically dead here. Yeah, the fact that it's giving us something a bit different to do is, is nice, I suppose. And I'm back here. Kill this guy again. I mean, the funny thing about this game is not even really the uh, the best World War Two stealth game out there, really, because uh, I, oh, I suppose it's not really a, a uh, it's not a straight up stealth game, but the uh, the Sniper Elite games I think are better stealth games than uh, Velvet Assassin is here. Um, I've not played I've played Sniper Elite V two. I've not played Sniper Elite 3 yet, but I mean even uh, Sniper Elite 2 is probably a better stealth game than this. I mean it's not it's not straight up bad this game. It's not uh, like I said I've not had a uh, I've not had an awful time with it, but it's just it's just very uh, very kind of dull this game. It's uh, pretty. I wonder if you can kill this guy without being shot by that guy up there. Oops. Yeah, he's going to get too close, isn't he? Uh, yeah, I think the biggest problem with this game is that it's kind of uh, it's kind of just things that you've seen before in lots of other stealth games, and n nothing really that original. I mean, even uh, dressing up in this uh, enemy uniform is just uh, 
obviously just uh, ripped straight from the uh, Hitman series. But um, I've actually played the uh, the Hitman games. I've got them. I should probably uh, maybe I'll make uh, Hitman Blood Money my uh, next episode of uh, this uh, old game kind of show that I'm going to be doing. No, that's that's not a bad idea. We'll uh, see if Hitman Blood Money is uh, Hitman Blood Money is actually a game that a lot of people. It's quite revered, Hitman Blood Money. So I'll see uh, how much better Hitman Blood Money is to compared to this, because that came out in. Uh, 2006, I think, Hitman Blood Money. And then obviously, yeah, uh, Hitman Absolution. I've been spotted. The basic dead here. And yeah, Hitman Absolution came out uh, 2012, I think. And uh, yeah, there's a new Hitman obviously coming out. Well, I say there's a new Hitman coming out. We're, we're going to uh, save our morphine, I think. Yeah, the. Uh, it's not really coming out exactly, the new Hitman. Because they're doing this kind of weird. Uh, episodic thing we skip this yeah we can obviously doing the uh, weird kind of episodic release they're doing with that new hitman which is interesting uh, I'm not actually against the idea of this uh, new episodic hitman game coming out uh, we'll have to see how they do it if they do something uh, they make it interest if they do, uh, do it an interesting do it in an interesting way I'm not actually uh, necessarily against releasing games in their uh, in episodes yeah we're just gonna make our way through I think there was a door on the left here how do you actually get through here That's what I'm trying to figure out now. Uh, oh, there we go. I think there's a door over here I have to go through. Here we go. There we go. So, uh, there are some areas where you kind of uh, crawl through and it goes to a first person perspective. Which is a, uh, it's a bit weird. It's kind of like, uh, like the ladders in this game you don't actually you uh, hit uh, when you hit climb ladder it just kind of climbs it for you which is a bit weird okay our house full so we kind of have to uh, sneak through this area well we haven't got much of a choice with all these enemies here can we go through this door okay so we've got to go through this maze here I guess we can stab. Is this guy going to? Oh, yeah. It's weird how uh, just getting close to them kind of sets them off. Like this guy, he doesn't know we're here, and yet getting too close to him kind of almost set him off there, which is a bit weird. So I guess we're going to stab. Yeah, I see. How does he know? How does he uh, know we're there? I mean, he can't see us. Yeah, for some reason. Uh, Going behind him, he's turning around thinking, Huh? Who's there? Huh? Who's there? It's like he shouldn't really be able to. Can I just walk past him? Okay, see if he gets too close, he's gonna go, Huh? Who's there? We can, uh, oh yeah. The thing I forgot to mention is that you can whistle in the game. So, uh, to draw enemies' attention. So a bit like a uh, Metal Gear Solid, where uh, in that game you can obviously uh, knock on walls to get enemies to uh, move out of the way. In this game you can uh, whistle. That doesn't seem to actually be working here. Yeah, because here we should just be able to sneak up on this guy and... No, uh, we'll have to use a, uh, one of our morphines here, because I can't see a way to get past him without... Uh, been spotted really. He seems to just go. He seems as though he's just going to uh, going to stand there, not move. All right, then. Well, she's on morphine. We'll uh, stab this guy. We'll uh, pick up his body. Oh, uh, 
but uh, we'll carry on. All right. So we're just gonna walk past that guy. Is it through here? Okay. Oh, they, they've uh, found the dead body. That's why they're. Uh, that's why it was playing that dramatic music. Is because the uh, dead body had been discovered. Oh shit. I don't quite understand why the game won't let us uh, sneak up on people and kill them. Because for some reason it seems to... When you get close to people it seems to uh, just alert them. Like like the game should let us uh, get behind people really and kill them. Now what's this here? Is this the key? No. For some reason when, they, when we get close to them they just seem to... Uh, oh we unlocked a uh, upgrading star. So morphine, increase the morphine duration. Increase the number of hits you can take. We're just going to uh just going to upgrade that again, I think. But yeah, like the gamer here is not gonna let us get behind this guy and kill him. So I guess it's either uh I guess our choice is to just uh kind of just have to alert him, I suppose. I don't, I don't really see how else we're going to uh, get the key because obviously the key is obviously being uh, carried by carried by uh, one of these guards here somewhere. <sighs> oh. Okay, so we. Uh, so I guess we can sneak up on them. I guess. Because uh, he was, he didn't, uh, he didn't see us, did he? Hello? Oh. I should be on. So is he, go is he going to come and kill us or what? I don't understand. This is what I mean about the. Uh, oh, is there uh, morphine here? That's what I kind of mean about the, the AI not being very smart, is that uh, he kind of spotted us there and didn't really seem too fast about chasing us really. So maybe we can uh, sneak up on this guy and kill him here. Go to, uh, oh he died. Yeah, it's kind of frustrating how the game uh, doesn't seem to want, doesn't seem to uh, very interested in letting us uh, sneak up on enemies, even though we could just take the uh, take the take the disguise off, I suppose. Oh, come on, get through the hole. Okay, uh, there we go. So it's kind of weird how we have to take the uh, disguise off in order to get through this area. So basically, the game wants us to make the game kind of have to make the game more difficult in order to progress, which is kind of odd. An odd design choice, because uh, you think the game would let us keep the disguise, but having the disguise actually makes it more difficult to get through the area, even though taking the disguise off also makes it more difficult. But it also makes it easier at the same time, which which is just odd. Cause see, if we were stood here with the disguise on, this guy would be uh, turning around and... Uh, that guy would be... Uh, we'd know where we are. But taking the disguise off allows us to sneak up on him. That is really odd design. I mean, who thought that was a good idea? And uh, Yeah, I like this game. It's frustrating. It's so... It's close to being something enjoy... to be something... something worth playing, you know. If they just... Just uh, <coughs> down he goes. Like some of the, if they, some of the, if some of the bad decisions weren't made with this game, and uh, some and the areas of it were tightened up a bit, it could actually be a uh, decent enough experience. But uh, 
I may as well use our morphine on this guy. Ooh, we might. Ah, uh, we can get him. Because at the moment we can only carry one. I'm, I'm guessing you can uh, upgrade. I guess we can upgrade our carry capacity of morphine at some point, but at the moment we can only carry one, so you may as well, may as well use that morphine up and uh, use that morphine and pick up uh, that spare one in the area. So I guess the disguise is kind of uh, more used, like uh, in that area, the last area we were in was had quite a lot of enemies in, so I guess the disguise is more to pass through large areas, I guess, but... I don't know. I find it really weird that the game you have to take that disguise off in order to pass through this area. I mean that is kind of weird design. Well, the the weird thing is that it, uh, the game kind of uh, I guess putting that toilet there was kind of a hint to take the, take the disguise off in this area to make it easier to get through. But um, why did the game could have just taken it off us? Oh, he's going to turn around. Oh shit. Now oh, we died, shit. <laughs> Should have used our morphine there. Got a bit cocky. It's like the game could have just taken the disguise off us. Because, uh, yeah, like I said, I came in here just thinking I could just uh, carry on wearing it. Oh, I'll probably edit this bit out because you don't want to uh, watch this again. Okay, so uh, I found the key. One thing I forgot, uh, one thing I uh, neglected to mention uh, earlier in the video is that um, the studio behind this game, uh, Replay Studios, actually. I mean, it's got a checkpoint. Uh, they actually shut down after this game. Well, uh, not long after this game came out. Uh, this is basically. Uh, Velvet Assassin is kind of their. Uh, their biggest release, I suppose you could say. Certainly, their most uh, well-known release. Uh, okay, we'll take the we'll take the uh, Luger because uh, we run out of a uh, silen silenced uh, pistol ammo anyway. And not that it being silenced makes a difference, because uh, whenever we've used it, the yeah, enemies always have been alerted to us anyway. So, may as well take the Luger. Probably won't use it. <coughs> yeah, what was up with that sniper? Hey, uh, oh, he's gone, I suppose. But yeah, we probably won't use this uh, pistol because uh, yeah, we could put our... Oh, it's a cutscene. What's going on here? Alright, there's a guy with a flamethrower. Alright, so... We could... I think we could put our... Uh, Disguise back on now. I think there was a, uh, yeah. May as well uh, put it back on. But yeah, we probably won't use the Luger because um, as a shooter, we haven't really had a chance to show it off. In the last game, in the last level, uh, the game gave us a shotgun, and there was a bit of a section where we had to kind of uh, blast our way through the level with the with the uh, with the shotgun. But as a third-person shooter, this game is uh, not very good at all. Oh, balls. aiming our pistol apparently. Uh, well, so much for not using it. Because, uh, oh shit, here they come. Okay, I didn't think that would be. Uh, apparently, that was suspicious. Aiming our pistol. But yeah, as a, as a shooter, it's not very good at all. Um, there's no cover system. Which, uh, by this point. Um, Cover systems are pretty much uh, standard in uh, third-person shooters, but uh, I guess, that, well, I can see why they didn't uh, put it in and why they kind of made the shooting in this game kind of as weak as it is, because they, because, uh, oh, we've got to watch this again. Can we skip it? Yeah, we can. Uh, they kind of wanted it to be a, st uh, a straight-up stealth game, but by this point, I mean, games like this, there's a reason why why uh, stealth games decided to not necessarily ditch stealth but decided to give you the tools to fight your way out of a bad situation because the problem with stealth games is that uh, well as you can see here I'm not sure why we're crouching here because uh, 
got this uh, disguise on. But uh, yeah, the following stuff games. Oh, uh, there's a bit of glass there. Not sure if standing on that is a big deal. But yeah, playing f kind of yeah, getting spotted in the stealth game and then having to. Oh, mission accomplished apparently. But yeah, if you if you've ever played a kind of an old school stealth game, a big problem they always have. Oh yeah, shut up. Is that uh, quite often you will uh, be in situations where. Okay, so we're going down here, I assume. Now it's the end of the level. Uh, but yeah, a big problem with Star Wars games is that um, if you get s uh, quite often you'll get spotted and uh, and killed, and then uh, once that happens, it you appeared as though I had found a way into the cathedral. I'll carry on what she said. Decided to stop talking. I don't know why these cutscenes are louder than the, than the uh, game. It doesn't really make I a whole lot of sense. I didn't know where the dark, musty vaults of the crypt would lead. The SS certainly were not here to hold a service. Whatever they were plundering, they were doing me a favor. They had finally delivered the butcher to me. I had to be careful. Shunsu and his infamous bodyguards could have been anywhere in the building. If there was an alarm, I would be certain to run into difficulties, and Shunsu, that psychopath, would take refuge behind his men. Yeah, like I was saying, quite often in the in the stealth games, you will. You will get spotted, often die, and then have to replay a section over and over again. And uh, it's happened in this in uh, this video. You see that a couple of times where I've died multiple times in this section and just had to replay them several times just to get through them. Whereas obviously in uh, something like Metal Gear Solid Five or Dishonored or the newer Splinter Cell games, there's a heavy emphasis on stealth and stealth is usually the most optimal way to get through a section but when things do go tits up you can actually shoot your way out of an area or you know stab your way out of an area in the case of Dishonored or use spells whereas this game seems to, just seems to uh, seems more interesting just to uh, oh, took that guy out As you can see, the aiming is uh, not very precise here. Kind of just uh, shooting and hoping for the best that we uh, hit, our, hit our target. But now, because we got spotted there, we uh, get spotted is more or less a death sentence in this game. At least on this uh, harder difficulty that we're playing on here. I mean, maybe some people fight think that's a good thing, but to me, I kind of, I kind of uh, don't really want to play through an area again multiple times just because I got spotted because that's the problem with stealth games is that, uh, is that um, you can kind of uh, play through a long section and uh, you can uh, spend you know 10 minutes uh, sneaking through a really hard section and then just get spotted right at the very the last minute and just fuck everything up and that's kind of a uh, oh, Kill Obviously, a nice thing that Metal Gear Solid 5 did was the whole kind of uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 had a mechanic where when you were spotted, you could uh, you could turn it off. But it had a mechanic where when you're spotted, you get a uh, brief few seconds of uh, slow motion, which gave you a chance to uh, take an enemy out who spotted you. Obviously, take which uh, took away some of the frustration of uh, being caught in that game. Whereas in this game. You get caught and you're pretty much screwed. And also uh, another thing, I uh, this happened in the last level as well about the a um, AI not being very smart. But like that guy there, he saw us open the door and he just kind of carried on his patrol pattern without really like you know like uh, we opened the door in front of him. He didn't really seem too bothered that they, that uh, nobody walked through. He's just gonna carry on his patrol pattern without without uh, investigating. Like a better game would probably had him uh, react there to uh, that door opening. So we went, um No, we'll just get the Luger. I'll probably uh, wrap this video up soon because uh, I've been going for a while here. There's not there's not a whole lot else I've really got to say about this game. I mean, it's not. I've not had an awful time with it so far. 
I think that uh, considering that this game was a, a full price release when it came out, so I guess a straight up forty pounds or sixty dollars. I mean, this game isn't worth sixty dollars. Uh, I mean, now you can pick it up for. Um, I'm guessing you can pick this game up for basically nothing at this point. Uh, you can pick up a second-hand console copy, or pick it up on Steam for pennies. Well, pennies at this point, I'm guessing. I mean, for if you could pick up this game for like a pound or a couple of dollars, it's it's not. It's a game which I think it's just the kind of game which you could uh, waste an afternoon with and just. Uh, it's one of those games that um, if you kind of want, want to just turn your brain off and just have if you want a video game if you want a stealth video game that you can play for an afternoon this will do the job but uh, if you're looking to have a, have a, uh, a really good time you can pretty much forget this one it's a uh, it's a stealth game it's uh, of a different era, really. It's kind of a, uh, it's old, kind of clunky. It's okay. It's okay. But uh, I wouldn't recommend. Unless you could pick up cheap, I wouldn't really recommend this one, to be honest. So uh, yeah, that's Velvet Assassin, anyway. An old game that came out in 2009, even though it feels weird calling it an old game. Uh, so I've been uh, I've been Jacob, of course. Uh, leave us a comment on this video, because I could obviously uh, I could always do with the feedback. Although I think my uh, videos are starting to uh, get better slowly. I'm certainly enjoying making them more than I thought I would. So yeah, leave us a uh, leave us a comment. And I'll see you in the next video. This has been Velvet Assassin. I've been Jacob. Goodbye.